on! As you can tell from the thumbnail, this video is all about Ventop, the infamous route on Zwift that every single time I go to attempt it, I can't because it's not accessible for a free ride. After a bit of Googling and reading through forums on Reddit, I learned that to free ride this hugely talked about route, then France as a map needs to be available and open on the app. But anyway, back to the ride and the point of this video. My point of this video is not to moan about why I can't ride this route. I will really quickly add that I only got off the bike after this ride that you're gonna see in this video an hour ago. So if I look a bit rough and tired, then that's why. Guys, it turns out that I'm a climber and not a fighter. I actually enjoyed this climb. Words I did not think I would ever say in a video. I enjoyed climbing then top. Probably slight overkill. I've got three bottles of water, three cans of small coke, because the shop never had large cans, and I have the usual, because Zwifting indoors is very civilized. So today I was supposed to do a half marathon run. I had that plan in my diary to do some running. I've got some big running events coming up this year, so I'm trying to mix up Zwifting with, with some running. However, as usual in the UK in February, it's absolutely chucking it down and I don't really fancy, I don't mind getting wet when I'm out running, but I don't really want to go out in it for the sake of it when I've got a bike in my office. So I'm going to do some Zwifting. What I am going to do instead of a long run is a long ride. I'm going to take on Ven Top. So I just want to come in close and say that I have never cycled Ventop before. I've done Alpe de Zwift. The name of the mountain in Ventop on the route isn't Ventop, is it? What's it called? I've done Alpe de Zwift a few times. However, I haven't done Ventop yet, so this is gonna be the first time. I'm gonna get on the bike. Oh, and also, I've got myself an excuse to eat the leftover mince pies from Christmas. So I've got some vegan mince pies, and I have an excuse to eat them now. Don't know how many calories I'm gonna burn on this ride. Probably not enough to make up for eating them. <laughs> But I need the energy, that's the excuse. Right, I'm gonna get on the bike. Let's do this. Okay, easy in. And I started on my merry way. For the record, my trainer difficulty is set to 50%. I noticed that arrow stays above my head the whole way. I've also forgotten to change my avatar bike. On one of my many recent four horseman attempts, I had unlocked a good climbing bike, as well as the Millenstein climbing wheels. I'm very pleased to have unlocked these, but it makes absolutely no difference to have them in my garage if I forget to use them on brutal climbs like Ventop. Right, so I'm heading up Ventop. Never done this course before. First time ever. I've done Alp to Zwift, what, four or five times now? But this is gonna be the first time going up then top. I keep on keeping on and I slowly but surely start to lose my mind as I climb this mountain. So looking on Google about times, I've had everything from two hours to three hours for my capability level. Now this route is tough and I've heard really negative things about it. Unlike the Alp, which holds a very special place in my heart, I don't think I've ever heard a single positive thing by a from other Zwifting YouTubers that talk about Ventop as a challenge worth beating. So Ventop is 1500 meters of ascent across 21 kilometers in distance, and it's also mind numbingly boring, or that's at least what I've been told by a lot of other YouTubers, and that's what they claim. To put this into context, for anyone unfamiliar with Ventop, Alp de Zwift is 12.2 kilometers long, and it's just over a thousand meters of climbing along a very twisty route with corners that you can tick off. Ventop, or more specifically Mont Ventoux, starts just after the route starts and is almost twice as long and is over 500 meters higher than the Alp. And then the worst part, according to other Zwifters, is the mind numbingly boring visuals of cycling slowly up a dead straight road. Okay, two and a half K down and the fan's gone on. 6% long drawn out climb. I'm just gonna drop my gear, get a high cadence. I don't want to grind my way up this. I've got um, got my ear pods so I can get some music going. 
then top when you're on it looks almost dead straight and watching the same Zwift animations pop up the same ones over and over to break up the scenery was a bit strange where the Alp feels a lot more fleshed out and of course you have the hairpin corners on the Alp to focus on and tick down which also helps you measure your progress Ventop has none of this no hairpin corners to tick off and no markers to push for you're left with nothing except your Zwift avatar and a long straight road that constantly goes up ahead of you I did find one thing to tick off though and I only found it by doing this ride and that was the tombstone markers on the side of the road that actually count you down and I actually started aiming for these which was um, a nice relief it's, it's crazy the sort of things you start using as markers when you have nothing else to look at <laughs> I somehow feel like this is the calm before the storm I think this is like an easy lead in I mean I say easy I'm still constantly climbing at six percent seven percent but yeah I'm gonna go easy it's a long ride and we're only 12 minutes in headphones are going in podcast going on uh... and then it was at this point I decided to drop my headphone on the floor and had to listen to my music through my speakers being picked up by my microphone. I never eat sugar. So, hopefully, I'll get a nice sugar rush. Sit rep. We're nearly 35 minutes into this mammoth climb. Just over 7K done. So far, I've been riding for 42 minutes. Yeah, 14 and a half K left to go doing this nice long straight bit here so okay it's getting hard it's getting tough uh 12 percent feels like oh. So in a nutshell, this route sounds brutal in every single way. Perfect for me and one I've been meaning to tick off for a while. But why did you choose to do this now, Ryan? I hear you probably not ask. Well, last week I had a really good Zwift race. I had a race that I made a video about that was on the Muckle Yin. You should go and watch it after this video. I'll leave the link for that video in the description. It's a really good video, even if I say so myself. So this Muckle Yin race felt like a benchmark race for me. It felt like I turned a corner in my Zwift career. Not only in my race craft, but also in my fitness, specifically the ability to climb steep climbs effectively without absolutely dying on my arm and probably more importantly without getting dropped by almost everyone else who's climbing it. It was a new experience and one that I wasn't expecting which is why I made the video. So I'm on the EVR winter, what's it called? EVR winter series which is the big ring. So it's 50k, 51.1k, 274 meters the biggest climb I think comes at 28k. I had decided to sign up and complete the Muckle Yin race because of a race I had taken part in only a few days before. The race was called the Winter Series and it was around the big ring in Watopia. Anyone that knows this course knows it's a long 51k fairly flat course that has one big climb at about 30k in. It's a big old hill that I need to get up to you know eventually finish this race i'm hoping fingers crossed it turns into some kind of social uh there are going to be a few people joining that i'm going to be chatting to i'd originally signed on to this race with another a plus zwifter named rt he'd agreed to social ride with me a social ride that will turn out not to be very social should be a good ride yeah i've got your mark on saw so yeah i, I mean, better pink. find you i've chosen i've chosen a, a jersey that's pink 
Oh no, I've gone past you. Uh, what, um, what position are you in? Eighth. Are you filming? Well, I'm here. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm funny in there. I can under yeah. Oh. Okay. Now I'm in front of you. See if we can find some friends. I see you're already uh, you're doing 2.5, 2.6. Hey, what's your max heart rate? Uh, one, 170 is uh, endurance. 180 is sprinting. I'm at 165. You see, you see this pack in front of us? Yep. We want them. We want them. Come on. Put in a dig. Let's catch these friends. Whole lot of friends. See, nice. 4.2. Nice. Once we catch them, we can recover. Ah. No, you, you can recover. Ah. A little bit more. A little bit more. I'm watching heart rate too. Come on, one more dig. Just one more dig. Ah. I haven't got it, man. I don't. Stand. Stand. Drop it down a gear and stand. I don't mean sprint. Just start rocking yourself backwards and forwards. You see my video when I stand? I'm yep. not sprinting. Use your weight on the pedals. Stand and let your body weight fall on the pedals. About 80 RPM. During that race, he gave me some very very good tips on climbing and also on breathing. Him sternly telling me to breathe is still ingrained in my psyche. He did this several times throughout this race. Oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm dying. No, no, all good. There's your heart rate didn't respond to that. My, I'm not sure. Rate, my, my plan, it? Yeah, it hasn't. But no, if you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Yeah, well, I can't talk. Yeah, it has now. Yeah. <laughs> my monitor was playing up. Go, 175. Yeah, your heart rate monitor's playing up. I didn't really want to do it to you, but no, there's I get the opportunity it. cost of keeping those guys in front. I get it. It was worth a dig. Your best draft is going to be fourth wheel. So I want you to sit at the back of us. Okay. Make sure you're getting the best draft you can. Why don't you do some deep breathing, slowly, in the nose, out the mouth, nice and controlled, nice and deep. Give me five. But during this race with him, calmly coaching me, I had a light bulb moment about climbing. You were warned about riding with me. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on your heart rate. You're now, I'm seeing 163 for starting. I don't want to see you above 165 unless we're climbing. So on these uphills, you do really well just to stand and let your weight fall on the pedals. Down two gears and just fall on the pedals. Just let your weight fall on the pedals. You Use some of that weight to produce power. All right, breathe for me, Ryan. I'm just trying to breathe. Nice and deep. Nose, mouth. Breathe and pedal. Need you to breathe. Zwifty will tell you to stop pedaling, and I'll tell you, tell you to breathe. This is basically the main event coming up. You get over this and you're golden. Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Okay. Keep on breathing. Focus on breathing. Feed the lungs the air. The lungs get the air into your blood. And I'll use some of that to power your legs. Keep on breathing. Breathe and push the pedals down. It's about it. If you can, just... Give you a couple of revolutions standing up at sort of 75 RPM. Allow yourself to fall on the pedals. You've got to stand. All right. Just, a, if I have to, I'll make a, a private video for you. I'll show you how I stand. Okay. There's much of that technique. More important that you breathe. Keep on jamming in fresh air. Keep on breathing. Just fine arts of swifting, standing and sprinting and how to manipulate your body to produce power. Good job. Halfway up. Don't worry, Ryan. I'm up for a social. There's only one way to get better. And people say a whole lot of zone two does it. Now I'm completely opposite. You want to get better, you have to push yourself. I'm f broken, guys. A little more. Control your breathing. 
I've got, I've got no control over anything, RT. Yeah. Yeah, okay, give me one good deep breath in. Just one good one. Completely fill uh, the lungs. Give me one good breath. Uh, I'm out the saddle. Good. Now, don't try and sprint. I'm not. Even drop down to 70 RPM and just allow your weight to fall on it. As you're, as you're standing, drop your shoulder into each stroke. Right. Okay. Drop your shoulder down and drop your head. Allow as much weight as you can to fall on that pedal. It doesn't have to be fast. Just use that weight. Oh. Drop it oh, on that's the good. pedal. Yeah, that's good. Look there. It's only another 100 meters or so. A little bit more. Oh, that's good. Oh, I've never done that. You have to remember that before May of last year when I got my first smart bike to ride on Swift, I hadn't ridden a bike since about 1998 and now my smart bike is a static bike that doesn't move. So the concept of rocking from side to side, putting my weight over my legs was new to me. Him telling me to do this seems fairly bloody obvious. And this was the first time I could really feel it helping my climbing. And in this moment, I was keen to practice this climbing technique some more. <sighs> ah, 180. Last <sighs> I also realized from my muckle yin attempt that I need to work on my cadence as when I'm tired, I start to grind. Great job, man. Great effort. Is this the banner? Oh, here's the banner. Where are we going now, are we? That's a banner. Oh, hell guys, I didn't even get the benefit of my draft boots. <laughs> I can hear you laughing. <laughs> oh, what timing on my draft boots though? Perfect timing. Second. So I decided the best way to practice my newly found love of climbing, my new rocking technique and my cadence was to attempt then top. So because of this race, I'd now developed new tactics for climbing, which were kindly shared with me by another Zwifting YouTuber. He mentioned to me about shifting my weight between the pedals as I stand over them, pushing a climb. I did this technique on that Muckle Yin primetime race for the first time, and it gave me massive improvements and results. As I say, it really surprised me how well I rode in this race. So it seems really obvious for a seasoned cyclist, but for someone who hasn't ridden a bike outside since 1998 and only owns a static smart bike, rocking side to side as I sprint or climb wasn't intuitive and this tip was a light bulb moment for me on my newly found love of indoor cycling. So with this race still ringing in my ears, I wanted to practice this rocking motion more and then top seemed like a good idea. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Okay, we're over an hour into this Brutal ride, over an hour, uh, just under 12k left, nearly 10k down, and we're not even halfway. Yay! So I'm happy just to get to the top, set a time, see what that time looks like, and then go from there. Yeah, turn back on. I'm dying. Turn back on. I got to 11K in just over 71 minutes. It felt good to be at halfway. I had no real indication of success other than how my body felt and it felt tired. Unfortunately, I also started to really grind. My grinding has started. My RPMs dropped because I was tired. I messed my cadence up a lot on this climb. Watching the footage back now, I can really see how much I really started to grind when I get tired. I've completed in a lot of Zwift races recently, pretty much one every day for a while. So climbing then top without a rest day probably isn't optimum training for good results. It was also at this point, my screen recording software decided to freeze and shut down. I unfortunately didn't realize it and had no more Zwift footage of me grinding my way up this long, slow, steep, straight road. All I have is this camera footage of me slowly but surely losing my mind. Ah, 
Got my gears wrong then. <sighs> Just trying to take advantage of some flats. Trying to tick down some of these kilometers. Okay, back to 8%. This is brutal, 9%. And back to grinding. 400 meters. Oh, what have I done? I haven't got it. Oh my God, my legs have gone. My legs have gone. What am I doing? I can't feel my feet. Ah, my toes. Ah, 30 meter sprint. Ah, I'll put it in too high. When I reached the end, I attempted a sprint finish. Always sprint for the finish line, but I was done. I had nothing left. I couldn't sprint at all. I'm done. For the last 5K of this ride, especially, I literally had nothing i got off the bike realized my footage froze halfway up the mountain at 11k that gave me the hump and i had dinner and just went straight to bed i officially completed ventop in 156 minutes and 55 seconds that's just under 157 minutes or two hours and 37 minutes that's two hours and 37 minutes of non-stop climbing for some reason this first climb up then top didn't feel very good in comparison the first time i climbed out to swift i felt fantastic i mean the climb broke me but i was over the moon to have completed it this didn't feel fast mainly because of how much i grinded my cadence average was 65 and if i held a better cadence then i would have improved my overall wattage which ended at 165 watts i I didn't feel that this attempt up Ventop or Mont Ventoux was at all my best. So with this negative feeling weighing on me and without 50% of the final part of the climb footage, I decided to try again. At the very least, I needed some footage to make this video. I took yesterday as my day off to rest. I still had to work, so I went to work, but I took it as a rare day off resting. And then today, I have a rare day off. I'm going to climb it again. I woke up ready for another attempt and I took this attempt seriously. Now, it was personal. I took all the same supplements I would normally take in my marathon prep, so my endurance preparation. I don't normally do this for a Zwift, um, but I did it on this occasion. I had a hearty breakfast of vegan sausages, tomatoes, and beans on toast. Loads of calories to burn. I cleaned up the crumbs from the mince pies during my last attempt, because they were still all over the floor. And only 48 hours later, I climbed back on the smart bike for round two. And this time, it truly was personal. I started the climb feeling tired. Legs were stiff, but they soon wore off and I went for it. This is where my fitness levels really started to show. Five seconds, here we go. Right, two, one, and go. <sighs> right, I mean, I say it's not a race, I'm racing myself. My gears too high they need to come down okay okay good calm before the storm yeah this should be good looking forward to this according to my stats i actually took the first 20 percent of this climb relatively easy but really ramped it up for the rest plan is keep my cadence as i say it my cadence is appalling Keep my cadence as close to 80 as possible, but definitely in the 70s where possible. Yeah, I just want to get up it. As I say, this is the second time I'm doing it in 48 hours. All because I want to make a video. But it's a good workout, good practice for climbing. And it's relentless, it's in a relentless climb. It really is. Okay, I'm just going to get into the rhythm now. So I'm not distracted by talking to camera. I had the option of two tactics, hold a steady and consistent pace, no surging or pushing, focus on cadence and shave some time off. Or go for it, push as much as I could and if I burn out, I burn out. Of course, I took option two. I'm not on a static bike that takes up 50% of my home office to hold a steady pace. 
I pushed. I pushed the hell out of this climb. So that's almost 3K. My cadence has stayed very strong. Changing gears well. Yeah, finished my coffee. I do have some electrolytes. More than anything, it just stops me feeling rough because of how much I sweat when doing this. My fan's off now for the benefit of the camera, but when I'm riding, my fan's on. It's actually a really nice day today. I should be out there running instead of sat in my house on a bike, climbing a virtual mountain. Yeah, let's keep going. 3.2k down. I practiced my standing, my rocking, and most importantly, my climbing, which was the intention of this ride. That's the reason I'm climbing Ventop. I tried to stay focused on my cadence, but this was hard sometimes. When I'm tired or at max effort, then I really like to grind, and I have to make a conscious decision oh, not to. That comes from focusing on my legs and good gear management. I enjoyed pushing some segments and towards the end, trying to get my pace up on slightly flatter sections. I say flatter, I mean, they just weren't at 12%. I actually warmed up now. I feel really good. So I have a little push, I think. Get out of the saddle. Oh, have a little push. Oh yeah. I'm trying to get that cadence up a bit. That's better. Get the heart rate up a bit, then I can sit back down. Get the blood flowing. And it was starting to work. And most importantly, I really started to have fun when I realized I wasn't dying. I wasn't tired anymore. I felt motivated. The adrenaline was going. That was fun. <laughs> Heart rate. <sighs> I even started to lose my mind in a good way and started to dance on the bike. <laughs> I would stand to push and try to hold that standing push for a minute or until my heart rate reached 170 BPM, whichever came first, normally the minute if I'm honest. Then I would sit for a while, remember to breathe, and then I'd go again. I pretty much did this on repeat for the whole ride. I saw someone else on the video waving their arms around to bring their heart rate down. Actually right now is a good time for some bird man. Like a Reiki video. Swift meditation. Is it working? Let me get that heart rate back down to like 150. Thank in heaven. Try and get that cadence up. That's better. Keep my cadence up. Just waiting for my heart rate to come back down. I need to get back into the 150s. And then when it gets to the high 160s, I'll stop. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, 12%. 13%. 12, 13. 12, 13. Let's do it. Oh, 
180, 179. Keep the cadence up. I am just gonna keep pushing. I'm uh, I wanna get to 11K by 71 minutes. I'm gonna stop my screen recording halfway so it doesn't corrupt and then start it again. I'm gonna go into garage, right, and I'm gonna change my frame. I didn't do this last time. So I should have a, I've got a TT steel mountain bike. I think it's the Trek Imonda is my lightest. That's, I think that's better for climbing. So I'm gonna do that, I've got that. And then wheels is the Millenstein. So frame is Trek Imonda, wheels, Lightweight Minenstein. I have absolutely no idea how much of a difference this is going to make. I've also got some times written down, but I reached 11k in 71 minutes and 26 seconds. So hopefully I can beat that today. This is a minute. That's one minute, three, four, five. now, one minute, out the saddle, don't lose it, I've got to do 2k in, how long, in 22 minutes, and then I'm beating my time from two days ago, right that's 10k down, 10k down, 56 minutes, up this climb, up the comm, over an hour now of cycling. I've got just under 30, no, just under 15 minutes to do a kilometre. I'm massively ahead of my attempt two days ago, which is good. I might do another push, the heart rate's down. Two days ago I did it in 156, just under 157 minutes. That's how long it took me to get to the peak, to the banner. So I'm at 57 minutes now. I pretty much have the same again. Okay, the incline dropped a bit there. So I'm gonna push so I can get some speed up. Right, 11K, let's, let's push to 11K. I've gone too high in the gears. Oh, that was a mistake. Okay. That's 11K as a cleaning van goes past. Man, they're loud. 11K in 65 minutes. I'm six minutes ahead of yesterday. That'll do. I knew at 11k in when my original recording froze on my previous attempt, I got to that point in 76 minutes. I had that as my benchmark to beat and I did. I got to 11k on this second attempt six minutes faster than I did 48 hours ago. And most importantly, I got there feeling really, really good. I was now having fun. Remembering to breathe is something I need to get better at. I've been enjoying the videos and exchanging messages with a very capable A plus Zwifter named RT. Zwifty will tell you to stop pivoting and I'll okay, tell you to breathe. Who gave me the rocking technique tip and in a really exciting video of his, which I watched recently. If I get a burrito, everyone's going to taste it. He tries to reduce his heart rate after a long sprint up a climb by doing this hand waving thing. This was just homage to that bit from that video. By the way, this video of his I'm referring to was probably the most exciting and equally funniest Zwift racing video I have ever watched. Have some of that guys. All of you have it. All of you have it. All of you. 
It was some burrito. I've left the link to this video in the description. Go and have a watch. Please watch this. You won't be disappointed. The guy is an awesome Zwifter and I take a lot of inspiration from the way in which he rides. Anyway, I wanted to use this ride not only as a good workout, I'm now past the point of simply getting to the top without stopping. So I wanted to work on my climbing and my heart rate through breathing well. And on this basis, this second ride up then top was a huge success regardless of the time. Exactly, six minutes. Oh. That's massive. Six minutes. Right, now to get up to the top, I've got 10K according to that marker, which is correct because there's 0 0.6, 600 meters at the top, like a ring around the top. So it's actually 10K now, 10K less than what I've done already. See if I can do it in the same time it's taken me to get here. Nice flat bit here. I mean, I'm only filming myself out the saddle. So this looks like an epic attempt by me. 4%, 3%, oh, sprint. 7%, 9%, and we're back. Yeah, I'm gonna turn that off for a sec. Yeah, this looks, this looks like an epic attempt of me just out the saddle cycling. I'm getting out the saddle to practice my rocking while climbing. Um, so I'm trying to do minute efforts, one minute, 60 seconds of out the saddle hill climbing to practice, to get my sort of rocking motion going. Uh, practice my gear changes on the handlebars, which I'm not very good at. Um, and also, equally as importantly, probably more importantly, to get some blood flow back into my butt cheeks. So, yeah, we're on for a good time at the moment. Energy-wise, I feel good. I've had three biscuits. I've had four biscuits, and I feel really good. I've been drinking my electrolytes. I'm sweating quite a lot. Obviously with the fan on, it kind of masks it. I've learned this from running. The electrolytes really, really get to you. So losing all the natural salts really affects your endurance. So, Replenishing the electrolytes is a absolute must. Oh, hang on. We can do a push here. Oh, I've done my gears wrong again. Okay, rocking motion. And then get the gears up. I forgot the rocking motion. Trick is to try and balance the power with the cadence, which I'm still learning. And it's probably a good time to mention the breathing. But breathing, because I pant when I'm tired and out of breath, mainly because I'm a big asthmatic uh, who's trying to climb a mountain. So I've been doing one or two things, minute out the saddle, like this, concentrating on my breathing, concentrating on my bouncing, concentrating on the gears, trying to keep the cadence in the 60s. And then, one of two things. Heart rate gets to high 160s, like it is now, or I reach a minute out the saddle. Whichever comes first. Normally the heart rate. We've got a 3%, pretty much flat. I've already done some pushing, so. This is good. Getting the speed up. Ticks down some of the kilometers. 94 minutes into this climb. Five K, five K, exactly. Come on. 
Come on, Ryan. Come on. Oh. Okay. 4K. These are the bits you need to push. Turn the music off, or it's going to get copyrighted. Right, turn the fan off, because I can't breathe. Okay, just over a K to go. I mean, I've absolutely smashed, smashed my PR from two days ago. Smashed it, less than a K. And weirdly, I was absolutely annihilated at this point, two days ago. Cut to this bit. 400 meters. Uh, I haven't got it. Oh my god, my legs have gone. Ah, my legs have gone! I can't feel my feet. Ah. I feel really good after that climb. I've really managed that well. Pushed hard as well. Come on, man. meters, 100 meters, turn the fan off, 100 meters, always sprint for a finish line, always. I reached the top of Ventop or Mount Ventu for the second time. Oh, hope I don't roll backwards. In 135 minutes and 55 seconds. So that's just under two hours and 16 minutes. By practicing my climbing the way I did, I managed to shave 21 minutes off my time from only two days ago. Now I know my time two days ago wasn't great, but 21 minutes, that's huge. 100. I haven't finished the route yet. Come on, finish the route. Ventop is now up there with the Alp as a fun challenge on Zwift for me. I really enjoyed this ride. Oh. I literally have nothing more to add. I'm over the moon with this result, so much so that I want to go back to the Alp de Zwift after doing Ventop and see if I can push hard up the Alp in the same way that I did up Ventop with the same rocking technique. I want to see if I can shave any more time off my PR. Now, if that's a video you'd like me to make, please let me know. I'll be interested to see if there's any interest in watching me do the Alp again. Also, on a separate point, if there is anything you'd like to see me make in a video about Zwift or even non-Zwift related, then please let me know. I'm open to suggestions for new videos. So thanks for watching this video please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already now now i just need to remember to change the bike and wheels back before my next race odds are you're going to be watching another video of mine of a moron racing on a climbing bike thanks for watching